Jeffrey Jarvis worked for Hughes Aircraft and was a payload laser specialist aboard Challenger this morning. He said he never thought he would go into space, never thought he would be an astronaut. Craig, did you ever think that you'd be going in space? Not in the slightest. Uh, it was kind of, you, you, <clears throat> you kind of look at the, the John Youngs of the world and you say, gee, that was a, that's a great opportunity. You kind of say, well, I'm not going to worry about that. I've got my career. And uh, so this one touched me about uh, well, a year and a half ago. They, with the uh, advent of the payload specialist program, they Hughes, uh, NASA offered Hughes the opportunity to fly a couple of their uh, employees uh, along with the LESAT. And so I uh, applied at the 11th hour and was uh, fortunate enough to get selected. Yeah, but that's the kind <coughs> of thing, you, you've always been kind of, you know, around the space program, <coughs> but you've never been able uh, until right now. I mean, you just <coughs> grab a hold and... <coughs> Well, it's been very satisfying because you are close to the space. You, you don't get to do the ultimate trip, but you're close enough to the program that you really feel like you're contributing, and you, you bring your friends in to see the spacecraft, and they look at it, and you say, gee, I wonder, you know, maybe it is something special, because I spent all my life around it, so it becomes very mundane to me. But again, you know, if you aren't, if you aren't ra around those kind of things, uh, I'm gee whiz about other things, so it's kind of... How in the world uh, could a sp space shuttle be mundane? <laughs> No, the, in terms of oh, spacecraft, yeah. because you work with it. Well, yeah. Even for the people who are around them, uh, they see them day in. You know, the trip is not mundane, but the shuttle itself is its a piece of machinery that people put together, well, like people like you and I put together. They've got different trades. Uh, some of them are skilled mechanics, some of them are, are software guys, but they're all, they're just like you and I, only have a different bent. Do, do you think of yourself as an astronaut? Because I, I, there are certain visions, I think, that we have when we think of an, an astronaut. Is, is that you? Uh, let's see. When I first was uh, down here, I said, gee, I don't belong here. And uh, after a while, I said, you know, maybe I do belong here. It's, uh, it, uh, I, I felt good about myself. Uh, I felt comfortable. I felt like I belonged. And, you know, you get, you, after a while, you get, you, the, the first time you put on the blue flight suit, you, you say, you kind of walk around, well, maybe I'll let them walk in front of me and they won't see me. But after a while, you, th you think you, 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 you do the things that they do. You, uh, you work around the, the, the orbiter. You say, I know what I'm doing here. I, I belong. Well, <coughs> if you're just joining us, uh, We've been uh, covering this story since this tragedy developed this morning in our live coverage of the actual space launch and the disaster that occurred shortly after liftoff. At the White House this afternoon, President Reagan had invited uh, reporters and network anchormen to a background briefing on his uh, State of the Union address. As you know, that address has been moved back for a week now because of this tragedy. And the president was in his office being prepared by his senior staff for his meeting with us. And uh, Mr. Reagan was informed by Vice President Bush and National Security Advisor Admiral John Poindexter that this tragedy had occurred. He immediately left the Oval Office and went into a study and turned on the television set where he became more informed on what was happening. The reaction throughout this federal city has been very sad indeed. Up on Capitol Hill, members of the House of Representatives and the United States Senate have been expressing themselves. And just a short while ago, House Speaker Tip O'Neill appeared in the well of the House. Today, our shock turns to sadness. We salute those who risked and gave their lives to serve our country at the last great frontiers. We salute those who died performing ex exploits that the people of my age grew up reading about in comic books or in fiction. That was House Speaker Tip O'Neill on the uh, floor of the House a short while ago. As we said, uh, we went to him and he had just finished his remarks. We wanted to continue listening to that uh, report that we had on Krista McAuliffe. We told you, if you're coming back to us wondering where the NASA people are, we had been told that they were going to speak at 3.30 Eastern time this afternoon from Washington, and then NASA indicated that they wanted to move it back, so we're told now that uh, the news conference, the news briefing from NASA with the latest on this tragedy will now come at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Now, let's go back to Lou Dobbs in Atlanta. 
Blue Waters, Bernie, and uh, it happened at 11.39 this morning, approximately a minute, mi minute and 15 seconds. We're getting some discrepancy on the exact time after liftoff that the worst tragedy in the history of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration happened, the first in-flight disaster in 56 U.S. manned space missions. CNN's Mike Cavanaugh recalls the tragedy. We have main it had become as routine as four, the delays, three, a shuttle on the two, launch pad. One, Countdown. Blast off. Time and time again, the shuttle had gone off, leaving behind a stunning trail of smoke and fire. This time was different. This time, as eyes followed it on its way to the heavens, something went wrong. Three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Velocity, 2,257 feet per second. Altitude, 4.3 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 3 nautical miles. Throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go at throttle up. Challenger, go at throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, nine nautical miles. Downrange distance, seven nautical miles. At first, it was thought it was just the booster rocket separating from the craft. But a closer look showed it was indeed the entire space plane that had become a cloud of smoke. Uh, Mission control said debris uh, fell several miles in the Atlantic. Recovery forces sped to the rescue, but NASA conceded there was probably no human life to retrieve. The seven-member crew had waited since Sunday for this mission. Among the astronauts, schoolteacher Krista McAuliffe from New Hampshire, specially picked and specially trained for the much-envied ride into space. Her parents watched from the VIP site not far away. They hugged and sobbed. Anyone who watched was moving. In Washington, the House paused for a minute of silence. President Reagan was tuned into the launch. Just like everyone else, he expected a success. Quite frankly, the president was stood there in almost stunned silence as he watched the television. Uh, you, could, uh, you could certainly read uh, the concern, uh, the sorrow, uh, the anxiety uh, on his face as he watched uh, and the group watched around him. As I say, he was, he was virtually watched in silence. 55 manned space missions had made it without an in-flight disaster. The 56 was not so lucky. Mike Cavanaugh, CNN. Senator John Glenn became a national hero in 1962 when he became the first American to orbit the Earth. Of today's tragedy, Senator Glenn said such a space disaster was bound to happen. Well, I think any, uh, I think everyone that's ever had any connection with the program has felt that uh, someday there would be a, a loss in flight. Uh, we're dealing with tremendous powers and speeds. You're traveling in orbit at five miles a second and trying to get back into the atmosphere from that kind of speed. And so, uh, are we going to be perfect forever? I guess the answer was proven this morning. That the answer to that is no. But Republican Senator Jake Garn says safety is NASA's foremost concern. Garn was the first U.S. senator in space. He blasted off on the shuttle Discovery last April. No, I was down on Saturday and for the launch on Sunday morning, and they were criticized on Sunday for being overly careful. Safety has always been uh, foremost in their minds. And we woke up on Sunday morning after having canceled at 10 o'clock the night before to a perfect morning. <clears throat> it was beautiful, sunny, clear blue skies, perfect launch, and there was a lot of talk that rather irritated me Well, NASA was overly cautious. And so, no, I don't think that's true at all. As I mentioned, this is the worst disaster in NASA history, but it's not the first. CNN's Bill McGowan has a report. Tragedy struck once before in the U.S. space program. In 1967, three astronauts were killed when fire swept through their Apollo spacecraft as it was being tested on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. The deaths of Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chafee are the only fatalities on board a spacecraft in the U.S. space program. That fire apparently started when an electrical spark ignited the oxygen-rich atmosphere in the spacecraft. The tragedy delayed the Apollo program for nearly two years while safety features were added. The Soviets were first in space with Sputnik in 1957 
and first with a man in space with Yuri Gagarin's 1961 Earth orbit. They, too, have paid a cost in human life. A cosmonaut was killed during a 1967 space flight when the craft's parachute failed to open on returning to Earth. In 1971, three Soviet cosmonauts were found dead in their return spacecraft after 24 days in orbit. Despite spectacular achievements like landing men on the moon, America's space effort has been plagued with technical problems from its earliest days. The space shuttle program has had its share of technical troubles. The shuttle Challenger has had earlier flights aborted because of fuel contamination, and one of its missions was cut short when an engine shut down in flight. The frequent launch postponements underline NASA's concern for safety factors, but today's tragedy emphasizes that human ingenuity cannot eliminate the element of danger from the exploration of space. Bill McGowan, CNN. We are just now beginning to get reaction from overseas. CNN's Richard Blystone has a report on that from London. Chosen from the elite of British flyers, they were to have flown to Houston later this week to start intensive astronaut training. Squadron leader Nigel Wood was to be payload specialist for the launch of a British military communications satellite from the shuttle Columbia in June. Lieutenant Colonel Richard Faramond is his backup man. The gap left by the disaster focuses on the European competitor to the shuttles in satellite launching, the Ariane rocket. Despite an Ariane blow-up last fall, it now stands a better chance of wooing British business. But right now we can say that certainly the flight of the orbiter will be grounded for a long period. And uh, as far as any is in concern, we shall try to help the space community to fulfill the as the best possible the engagement. A spokesman for the Ariane Consortium said, we share this catastrophe with our American friends. The Europeans have learned a lot from the Americans, the spokesman said, including that the smallest thing can cause an accident. Here is how Soviet viewers learned of the disaster in a country that knows about mourning spacemen. At least four Russian cosmonauts have died on missions. Vladimir Komarov in 1967, and in 1971, the three-man crew of a Soyuz capsule. And I'm reminded tonight of those words of Werner von Braun um, 19 years ago yesterday at the uh, Apollo fire. When he reminded us all, he said, the public view of this is that you get a bunch of guys, train them up as astronauts, light the blue touch paper, they come back, you've got a bunch of heroes. It just reminds us all that we're not in the business of making shoes. This is the message from the British astronauts. We are greatly saddened by the tragic loss of life at Kennedy Space Center, and the deepest sympathy is extended to the wives and families of the shuttle crew. Simple language and matter of fact, typical of the kind of people who risk their lives in space. Richard Blystone, CNN London. President Reagan, deeply shocked and concerned over what happened today, the president was preparing to discuss his planned State of the Union message with reporters, including this one, today. Instead, his national security advisor came in with the news, along with Vice President Bush. Soon after, President Reagan decided to postpone delivering that message tonight. He'll do that next Tuesday instead. Tonight, President Reagan will address the nation on the Challenger tragedy. White House spokesman Larry Speaks says it's too early to speculate about the impact of this explosion and the deaths on the space program itself. The president said, and I quote, these people were dedicated to the exploration of space. We could do no more to honor them, these courageous Americans, than to go forward with the program. As we indicated, Vice President George Bush was at the White House when the shuttle exploded this morning. After a meeting on Capitol Hill, the vice president told reporters how he and the president reacted. Obviously, press is concerned, shock. But that was all happened very fast. He went in, I went back down to my office, then I went in afterward before I came up here and chatted with him, and he was watching some of the replay. But it was, you know, concern for the families. That's, the, that's his motivation and certainly mine. Vice President Bush at this moment, now on his way to Cape Canaveral, Florida, to express his concern directly to the astronauts' families. Members of Congress today expressed their shock and dismay at this tragic shuttle accident but they vowed that the tragedy would not stop America's space program.
as long as man has the thirst for knowledge, we will continue to press outward. And in the process, there is risk. That risk is taken by each one of us every day. And that risk is understood by all the members of a crew that climb into a loaded spaceship. 